Welcome to the March podcast, where we will be highlighting latest papers in cytokine signaling and IL-6 biology. Now remember, all the content discussed is available in more detailed slide format at cytokinesignaling.com, which is our free resource website. Now for March, five papers have been added to the CSF website, and I'd like to highlight two of these in this podcast. Now our first paper looks at the results from the surround T study of serocumab in patients with active rheumatoid arthritis, refractory or intolerant to previous biological treatments with at least one TNF inhibitor. And the lead author here is Professor Daniel Alitaha. Now surround T is a phase three multi-center randomized control trial in a population considered difficult to treat. It was conducted at 183 centers in 20 countries, so truly an international effort. Patients were randomized one to one to one to placebo serocumab 50 milligrams every four weeks or serocumab 100 milligrams every two weeks. And each group had in the order of 290 or thereabouts patients. And the patients continued concomitant DMARTs. By week 24, all placebo treated patients were randomly reassigned to either 50 milligrams or 100 milligrams serocumab with treatment continuing up to 52 weeks. And the primary efficacy endpoint was the proportion of patients achieving an ACR20 response by week 16. Now, what are the key results? Well, of the 878 randomized patients, 523, that's around 60% of the cohort, had previously taken two or more biologic treatments, including non-TNF inhibitor drugs. 712 patients, that's 81% of the cohort, were taking a DMARD at baseline. The primary endpoint was achieved by 117, that is 40% of patients taking serocumab 50 milligrams every four weeks, and 132, 45% of those taking serocumab 100 milligrams every two weeks, compared with 71, that is 24% of the placebo group. Now the adverse event rate was similar across the groups with injection site erythema, the most commonly noted adverse event. So, concluding, compared with placebo treatment with serocumab, 50 milligrams every four weeks or 100 milligrams every two weeks was associated with rapid and sustained improvements in the signs and symptoms of rheumatoid, some improvements in physical function and improvements in physical and mental well-being. The safety and tolerability of serocumab are similar to those for other drugs targeting the IL-6 signal pathway, and that's not unexpected. Now, our second paper that I want to bring to your attention is analysis of the efficacy and safety of tofacitinib in older and younger patients with rheumatoid arthritis. The lead author here is, um, is Jeff Curtis. Now, this analysis compared the efficacy and safety of tofacitinib 5 milligrams or 10 milligrams twice daily versus placebo in older, now that's more than 65 years of age, and younger, less than 65 years of age with moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis in phase 3 and long-term extension studies. The phase three population comprised patients with five multi-center double-blind randomized control trials, and that brings a total of 3,111 patients to the analysis. The long-term extension population comprised patients who had participated in prior phase one, two, or three qualifying index studies of tofacitinib, and that brings a population of 4,102 patients. Data were pooled from the phase three trials and separately from the long-term extension studies. Now, the key results that you can see in the slide deck provided demonstrate that the probability ratios for ACR responses and HAC disability index improvement from baseline of greater than or equal to 0.22, and this is by month three, favored tofacitinib and were similar in older and younger patients. The incidence rates for severe adverse events and discontinuations due to adverse events in the pooled phase three studies at month 12, in the pooled long-term extension data at month 24, were gener generally numerically higher in older versus younger patients. And this was irrespective of treatment allocation. So concluding the overall efficacy of tofacitinib appears to be similar in patients aged more than or equal to 65 years compared with younger patients. The higher incidence rates of serious adverse events and discontinuations due to adverse events in older patients are consistent with observations from studies of conventional synthetic and biological DMARDs, including, for example, tumor necrosis factor inhibitors in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. 
Now, just before finishing, I, I want to point out that the other papers that we included in March include the findings from a multi-database cohort study of cardiovascular safety in patients with rheumatoid arthritis treated with tocilizumab versus those treated with TNF inhibitors, and also a paper evaluating the efficacy and safety results of two phase 2b studies of ABT-494 in patients with rheumatoid arthritis, that's a new JAK inhibitor. The first in patients with an inadequate response to methotrexate, the second in patients with an inadequate response to TNF inhibition therapy. Now finally, don't forget that all the materials are available in the publications section of the cytokinesignaling.com website.